Hello and welcome to this video on set, intersection, union and complement. Now in the previous video we looked at how you could form a Venn diagram and I'm going to presume in this video that you already know what a Venn diagram is and what it means. Now you might wonder if there's a way we can refer to the items of a Venn diagram in a specific region. So how could we refer to, say, this region of the Venn diagram? Or how about this region? Or how about all of the contents of A or B? And there is a way we can do that. Now the first thing is set intersection. And the intersection of two sets are the values which in both in the first set and the second set. So we write it like this, so A intersection B, and you could sort of read that symbol as and. So this means the set of things which are in A and are in B. And by the way, that's not the letter N. It's sort of like a, a heel symbol. The actual symbol itself is called a cap symbol. So we want all the values in this Venn diagram which are in A and are in B. Well, that's the 3 and the 4. The 3 and the 4 are in the A circle and they're in the B circle. So we get a set of 3 and 4. Now there's another thing called set union, and that gives you the set of things which are in A or are in B. So we write it like this, A or B, so that we can read as or if you like, but it means a union of sets A and B. And basically we write the things which are in A or are in B, but it could be both as well. So if we look at these two sets, what things are in A or in B? Well, one is in a or, in, or it's in B, 2 is in A or B. Now 3 is in both, but that still counts as being in A or B. So we've got 3, we've also got 4, we've got 5, 6, 7. So in fact the only things that aren't in A or B are 8, 9 and 10. So this is the union of the two. So for example, let's say I had A, B, C and I did the intersection with C, D, E, then we're looking for the things which are both in this set and in this set. Well, what's in both? Well, only C's in both. So we get a set with just one item, which is C. And what about the union? If we do the union of A, B, C with C, D, E, then we write the set of things which occur in either of the two sets. And remember that sets are not allowed to contain duplicates, so we don't write the C twice. So it can be A, because it's in either of the sets, B is in either of the sets, C is in either of the sets, D is in either, and E is in either. So we don't write that C twice, and we get this. Now there's a special set we have when the set contains nothing. So if we had, for example, AB intersection with CD, then remember that asks what things are both in the set AB and CD. Well, there's nothing that's in both. They have no overlap at all. And therefore we have a set of nothing and we have a special symbol for that. It's this, and that is known as the empty set because it is empty, it has nothing in it. And in fact, that's the only Scandinavian symbol that I know that's used in mathematics. You might have seen like names like Soren or words like Fjord. Now there's a few extra things I want to show you before we get into the questions. Um, we also have the complement of a set. So if we had a dash, we can interpret the dash as not. And that basically gives you the set of things which are not in A. So if we look at our Venn diagram, what things are not in the A circle? Well, we can see 5 is not in A, 6 is not in A, 7 is not in A, 8 is not in A, 9 is not in A, 10 is not in A. So we have the set of 5 all the way up to 10. Similarly, if we wrote B dash, that's the complement of B. So it's the things which are not in B. What's not in the B circle? We've got 1, 2, 8, 9 and 10. So I should have labelled this earlier. This is known as the complement of A. And notice the spelling, by the way, it's not complement. If you're complimenting someone, you're saying something nice about them, it's the complement, which kind of means the opposite. So things which are not in A. There's one final piece of notation. If you have the letter N followed by a set, this is a function, it takes a set and tells you how many things are in that set. Now don't confuse that N, by the way, with this symbol here. That's not an N, that is the kind of intersection symbol. That is actually the letter N in the conventional sense. So this tells us the number of things in A. 
So, how many things are in A? What's the number of items in A? One, two, three, four. So we get four. If we did uh, the number of things in A and B, that says, well, how many things are in A and B? Well, there's two things which are A and B in the intersection, so it's two. And if we did the number of things in the empty set, how many things are in the set with nothing in it? Well, obviously, zero things. So the size of the empty set is zero. So this just means the size of the set. If you want a posh word, you could say it gives us the cardinality of the set. The cardinality of a set is the size of the set, but you don't need to know that word. So let's use that theory to work out these questions. A and B are two sets. So let's draw a diagram with two sets in it. We're just going to assume they overlap for the moment. We've got A, we've got B, and we've got our special set of everything. So, it says the number of things in the set of everything is 47. So there's 47 things in the whole box. Uh, there's 22 things in the set A, there's 13 things in A and B, and there's 30 things in A or B. So firstly, we want to complete the Venn diagram. So as I said in the previous video, it's often best to start from the middle working outwards. So how many things in A and in B, the overlap, the intersection of A and B? Well, it says the number of things in the intersection of A and B is 13. So remember, this is a frequency Venn diagram because the numbers we put in each region of the Venn diagram are not the actual values themselves, it's the number of things in each set. So we only put one number per region because it's telling us the number of things in that region. So now we work outwards. So the number of things in A is 22. That means the total number of things in set A is 22. Now 13 in here, so we just do 22 minus 13, which is nine. So in total, we now have 22 things in A. We're also told there are 30 things in total in A or in B. So A or B is basically all of this region here. It might help to actually quickly sketch these. So that is A or B, and that's A and B, the intersection of A and B. So, we know that there's 30 things in total in all of this kind of figure of eight regions. 30 things in here, so these three numbers have to add up to 30. So those two add up to 22, so we must have eight things in here, so these add up to 30. And finally, it says there's 47 things in total, so these four numbers add up to 47. So these three add up to nine plus 13 plus eight, which we saw was 30. So there's 47 things in total, there must be 17 things outside. Now that we've completed the Venn diagram, we can answer these other questions. So we want to find the number of things in A and not B. That's how I'd say it. So the number of things in A and not B. Well, let's look at our Venn diagram. What is the region for A and not B? Well, it's this region here. This region, we're in A, but we're not in the B circle, so it's nine. What about the second part? The number of things that are not in A and not in B. So it's neither in the A circle nor the B circle. It's not in A and it's not in B. We've got 17 of those. It's the region outside. And finally, this one's a bit hard. We got the number of things in not A or it's not in B. Is this region not in A or it's not in B? Well, it's not in either. So we've definitely got the 17. So we put the 17 plus. Now, what about this region? Is it not in A? Well, no, because it is in A. Or it can be not in B. Well, this region is not in B, so we do include that 9. And similarly, that 8 there, not, it's not, and it, it has to be one or the other or both. So it's not in A, so we want to include the 8 as well. But the middle though, is that not in A or not in B? Well no, because it's in both A and B, so we don't include that. So that adds up to 34. That was quite a tough one. Right, what about the second question? So our set of everything is 1 up to 10. A is the square numbers, B is the odd numbers. We want to list the elements of a and B, A or B, not A and not B, and A and not B. Now it'd be easiest to do a Venn diagram first so that we can quickly get these sets after. So we got A here, B, 
So let's consider the numbers 1 to 10, each one at a time. So what numbers are square and odd? Well, 1 square and odd. 4 is not odd. 9 is square and odd. So we've got 1 and 9 in the middle. They're the square and odd numbers. What numbers are square but not odd? So then A but not in B. Well, we've got 4. That's square, so it's in A, but it's not odd, so it's not in B. And that's the only one. So what numbers are odd but not square? We're now in this region. Uh, well, 3 is odd but not square. 5 is odd but not square. 7 is odd but not square. And finally, have we got numbers which are neither? It's neither odd, i.e. even, and they're not square. So we want even numbers which are not square. Well, that could be 2, that could be 6, or that could be 8. So we've now got our Venn diagram, and then we can work out these questions. So what's in A and B? We want to list the elements this time. So what's in A and B? Well, it's just 1 and 9. What about part B? We want the things in A or in B. So remember that's just a figure of eight shape, the things in A or in B or in both. Now, so let's put them in ascending order. We've got one, I can see three there, four there, five there, seven and nine. What about C? We've got not in A and not in B. So those things are two, six and eight. And finally D, it's in A and it's not in B. So it's in A, but it's not in the B circle, it's just four. Now, the final one, question three. A and B are two sets. The number of things in A is five, and the number of things in B is seven. Part A, if A and B is the empty set, determine the number of things in A or B. So if we draw that as a Venn diagram, it's saying that nothing is in A and in B, so we've got zero things there. Now it says the number of things in A is five, so we must have five things here, and the number of things in B is seven, so we've got seven here, because then the total of the B circle is seven, and it wants us to determine the number of things in A or B, so the thing in this figure of eight shape. So we can just see it's a total of those three numbers, it's gonna be 12. And if we were to work out the number of things in A and in B, we can see from the Venn diagram it's zero. What about B? Now, this symbol we haven't seen before, that means is a subset of. And what it means is that anything in A has also got to be in B. So, for example, if I had 1, 2, that is a subset of 1, 2, 3, 4, because anything in this set is in this set. It wouldn't be true if I had it the other way around. If I said that this is a subset of this, well, it wouldn't be true because four is not in this set. But everything in this set is in that set, so this is a subset of that. Now, the way we can draw it as a Venn diagram is if everything in A is also in B, that means that the A circle must be inside the B circle, because then everything that's in A must also be in B. So it says the number of things in A is five and the number of things in B is seven. So the number of things in A is five. So the number of things in B is seven. So we must have two additional things in B which are not already in A. So the number of things in total in B is seven. Now let's work these out. So what are the number of things in A or in B. So that means we're either in A or in B. Well, that's just the same as saying we're in B, this circle here, so it's just seven. What about the second part? The number of things in A and in B, so we, we've got to be in the A circle and in the B circle. That's just the same as saying we've got to be in the A circle, so that'd be five. Now, I didn't ask this, but let's say I added this extra question. How many things are not in A but are in B. So they're not in A and they're in B. Well, that's these two things here because those two things are not in the A circle, but they are in the B circle.